In this video, I'll show you how to paint Morgwaith and her Blade Coven. We'll also learn that I can't really paint eyes on camera, and that I really need to practice. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell for notifications of all my latest videos, and we'll see you on the other side. Let's get started with Morgwaith then. It's my Welsh accent coming to the fore. Morgwaith. 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 I'm sure your pronouncing is, pronunciation is different uh, wherever you live. So let's get going. The first colour we're going to do is all the black bits. I'm using a bad and black for this. As you can see, it's a, a Corax white prime. Now you can use any colour white to prime. It doesn't have to be a Games Workshop special. And what we're going to do with this bad and black is we're just going to paint in all those kind of bits. So you've got the shoes, you've got the... Um, I guess they're boots, aren't they? So they go all the way up to the top of the thigh. We've got the straps on the back of the, the armor plates as well. It's a bit of a fiddly one. Don't worry too much if you paint over some of the bits that are going to be uh, metallic later on. And we've also got the, the haft of the spear to do as well. So just paint that black. Just be really careful when you come to the, uh, the parts of the skin. That's why we've started with a white undercoat, because we want to make it easy when it comes to doing the skin and the hair, rather than having to try and paint uh, that over black. So just work your way around. I seem to have accumulated a little bit of a spare bit of plastic, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll uh, jump on the metallics next before we highlight the black. With that black done, let's move... Uh over to the metallics. So I'm using iron hand steel for the uh, silver metallics and we've got a fair few little bits and pieces to do so we've got the blade here uh, and I will say as well is all the techniques I use with uh, this model you can use on all, all the other models as well um, so we'll focus just on this model for the tutorial um, and if you're not sure what bits need to be silver then just uh, check the old box art because that's the kind of style we're going for we've got the the greaves as well and again don't worry too much if you uh, accidentally paint bits that are going to be gold later the only thing i would be careful of is just be really careful when you're kind of around the areas that are gonna like this skull here for example that we're going to do a little bit of an effect with later and we don't really want to pollute that with the metallic I mean, we can always clear it up with some Corax white later, but the the tidier we are now, the less time overall it's going to take us. So just work your way around, get all the metallics painted. Don't forget the collar on the neck there and the, sh the kind of the shoulder guards, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, shade that next. The first shade we're going to pop on this uh, silver is a little bit of null oil. We want to work this uh, over all the bits we've just painted, basically. So take your time, work your way around. Um, one thing I'll just kind of draw your attention to be careful on is with the blade like that. If I then stand it up like this, all that null oil is going to run down to the bottom there. So it's just important to try and keep that as flat as you can uh, while you're waiting for everything to dry. And don't put a, a too much of a heavy load of null oil on either. Uh, and for reasons I'll explain in a minute. But we're going to kind of give it a... If you look at the box art, it's got a little bit of an ethereal glow on the... Uh, on the silver armor so we're going to look at accentuating that um, or in putting it in for starters and then that will hopefully accentuate the armor so don't go too heavy with this null oil and then we'll come back and we'll pop the the next bit in uh, to shade it down the color we're going to use to put a little bit of uh, that bluey tint in is going to be ethematic blue contrast paint now you don't want to have too much on your brush for this and you just want to brush it into those recesses and on the outside there and you can see that's giving you that kind of nice little glow when it kind of goes over that null oil it won't uh, it won't shine through too much so if you think you've got too much on there you can just clean your brush and just you know go back in and just move it around a little bit before it dries um, and it's really up to you how much or how little you put on there uh, but I'm going to put a little bit around here because I just want to accentuate some of these plates of armor uh, and also the kind of the, the interior of this uh, necklace or 
choker as it were there. So let that dry and then we'll come back and highlight all the silver next. To highlight the silver we're back to our old faithful chrome from Vallejo Model Air. Of course you can use uh, Stormhose Silver if you haven't got uh, chrome. And all we're looking to do is looking to catch all the sharp edges. Nice and easy, nice and straightforward. Just work your way around the model. Where you can catch an edge, catch an edge. And where you can't, just use the tip of your brush to get the to get the angle, get the, the highlight that you want. Just like that. So work your way around, highlight up all the silver. And we'll come back, make a start on the gold, and we're, we're starting to get a bit moving now. To base the gold, we're going with uh, Retributor Armour. And we've got a fair few bits to do. So we've got all the kind of uh, detailing on the, the staff. We've got the trim on the, on the armour. Just take your time on this, not to go over that, that silver that you've finished. Okay, it's not the end of the world, so don't worry too much, but just try and be as tidy as you can, because all it does just saves us a lot of time later on. See, I've gone over on the black there a little bit, but that's going to be okay. Um, we've also got the, the trim around this kind of chalice here. Um, and we've got the crown as well. So if you're not 100% on all the bits that are going to be gold, just check the box art. Again, when we come to any of these kind of stones, just be careful not to paint them. We will kind of do a once over with Korax White later before we move on to things like the skin and the hair. Uh, but anything we can save now, more time being careful now saves us a bit of time later so get that done and we'll come back we'll shade it and highlight it next looks nice and bright under the light so i'm going to shade that gold now with some gulliman flesh contrast paint now what's really important here you're going to get a really nice warm gold but you don't want to uh, drown the mini okay because if you drown the mini it's just it's going to be too powerful an effect so make sure you haven't got a huge amount on your brush and you just want to paint this over all the gold that you've just finished so it's nice and straightforward just about taking your time and remember we're, we're building up a picture here we're not just going to put up one color down and she's all done we're building up different layers and different colors and that's what's going to give us a a really great final results take your time enjoy the process enjoy seeing how it all comes together and of course make sure you're working on the other ones at the same time as well uh, i'm not doing that for the video because it would uh, probably take me a little bit too long and i wouldn't be able to get the video out to you guys uh, quickly enough so i'm just doing the one uh, but work on them all at the same time that way you don't waste as much paint and you can really see the set coming together so carry on working on that and we'll come back and highlight the gold next. When that uh, Gellerman flesh is dry, we're going to go in with some Liberator Gold just to really help brighten up and add some definition to the gold that we've uh, we've painted. Now I'm going to do some of this with the, the point of my brush like this. Just pulling it down. And then there's going to be other parts, so I'm just going to swap the model around so that I can need to do on, the, on the crown here. Where I'm just going to pull along, and that's probably a little too thick on there, so I might go back in and repair that a little bit. In fact, that's way too thick. <laughs> so I'm going to clean my brush off, pop some Retributor armor. I'm just going to brush that over there like that. So I'll let that dry, and I'll come back to the. The crowns they are, you see I make mistakes, everybody does. And it's just, in my case, I was just rushing a bit to try and get through this to show you how to do it. Uh, on this part here, where we can, we can try and catch the edges like we did with the, the metallics. Just gives us that uh, brightness to the gold. And where we can, we can look to catch the, the top edges there. 
just to give us that bright shine. So I'm going to fix that off cam. Let's try this one. Hope you can see that. Get that brightness on there. Um, work your way around. Obviously, we've got the shoulder guards as well, which are nice and easy just to catch those edges. I've just realized I've forgotten to paint the gold on the top of the cup as well. So, uh, take more time, uh, chill out, enjoy it, and don't rush because I'm rushing and I'm making mistakes. So, good lesson there for you just to, just to relax a little bit more and don't rush. Okay, so we uh, we got there in the end. Um, so the last thing I want to do on the gold is just uh, use a little bit of uh, that chrome just to kind of hit those sharpest edges to make the the colour really pop out. So we kind of got the top edges there. And this is a, a case of just, again, yeah, taking your time. Less is Less is more with this and for the for the head it's going to be upside down I'm just going to get a really nice thin line using the tip of our brush there just to make that gold that extra bit shinier so metallics are done we're going to move on to the red next so the red on this model is a nice deep crimson so I'm going to start off with some Mephiston red and because we're painting this over white we may need uh, two coats It'll cover okay in some places, but as we kind of make those longer brush strokes like that, it'll start to start to dry with some blotchiness to it. But it's not an issue, just go in and give it another another coat coverage. So essentially what you're doing, we're looking to paint all the clothing with the Mephiston Red. Again, being careful over areas we've finished or bits that are white. You can see there how it's a little bit thin that we we may need to put a second coverage on there. So nice and easy, work your way around the model, get everything, all the clothing red. Being careful about bits you finished, and we'll come back and shade it. With our red done, we'll shade it with some null oil. So standard null oil caveat applies. Don't throw it on, you've got some lovely creases to get it into here. So make sure you do that, but don't let it pool too much. And beware gravity, because as soon as you switch it up like that to dry, all the null oil is going to come flying down to the bottom and, and it's going to want to settle there. So just bear that in mind. As ever, take your time finishing off and going around uh, bits that you've finished in different colours. And then we'll come back once it's dry and we'll start to highlight the red. Once we've got the red done, um, we just need to go and patch up some of the stuff we've done and then we'll be on to skin hair and we'll pretty much be there. No, I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Make sure that null oil is dry and then we're going to go back to um, Mephiston Red and we're going to paint the kind of the big swathes of material that we've got just like that coming through there. And most of this I'm kind of doing with uh, the tip of the brush, the point because it just gives me that opportunity to be a little more careful with where I place those highlights. And you can see straight away it starts to starts to pop out. Obviously as that dries it'll, it'll mute down a little bit. Um, but it gives us a, a really nice popping red which kind of mimics the box art. Obviously we're going to do some more highlights but I've uh, done the back there. Just leaving that null oil in the recesses. Um, and then it's just a case of, for the bodice, just keeping the, the shade in those recesses. Take your time, work around. And again, if you're not sure where these the, the shadows sit, check the box art because it does a pretty good job of kind of outlining them for you. So just work your way around. I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit off cam and we'll come back and start to do some more highlights. Red's starting to come together now. So let's take some Evil Sun Scarlet and we're kind of going to do something similar that we just did uh, with the Mephiston Red. But with this, we're just going to be a little, a little tighter in terms of where we put it. 
use it to kind of catch some outside lines there. And this will really help add to the, the richness of these red colours that we're building up before we uh, before we just add some final kind of extreme highlights to hopefully make them uh, pop that much more. If you're struggling for them to, to pop out, then it, sometimes it does need that just that little bit of extra uh, evil suns that you see there. So I'm going to finish up the body soft camera again, just looking for those sharp lines, really. Because we start to build that separation. Just be mindful of the shape. So you've got kind of spherical shapes here, so you can reach spherical type highlights. So just work your way around, get that in, and then we'll come back with another highlight. And that's the red done. And then it's time to tidy the model up before we go wild getting all the skin done. The last extreme highlight we're going to put on the on the red is with Fire Dragon Bright. Now, with this, we just want to use the tip of the brush to just put it in the most prominent areas. So it's going to catch bits of light. We only want thin lines. We don't want thick lines because the thin lines will really kind of Sorry, thick lines will really make it um, orangey, whereas what we're looking for is just that extreme highlight. Same on the bodice here. Just want thin lines because we don't want the red to look too orange. We want it to keep its vibrancy, uh, but at the same time we want it to just have that kind of little bit of a, a popping highlight. So just work your way around the model. Again, remember the shape. If you're not sure, follow the box art because it's it's really good at showing where the, the extreme highlight should go. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll tidy everything up next. Tidying up the mini is really simple. Um, so you just take some Corax white and have a look at where you may have uh, spilt over onto some of the the area so anywhere we've got these kind of skull designs for example let's just tidy those up I've spilled it to the face a little bit there so I'm just going to tidy that with some uh, some of the Corax white and it's a really easy stage just work your way around the model make sure that the hair hasn't got any spillages on it because you want this to be totally white for the or not totally white but you want the Corax white to be uh, covering any mistakes before we kind of go into the the next uh, next section. Once all that tidying up is done, I'm going to do the, the hair first, and for that, I'm going to take some ethematic blue. And I'm going to mix it with some contrast medium one to one, and then I'm just going to paint it all over the hair. You can see it's kind of dropping into those recesses, but it's actually it's very thin. So the key here is to make sure that you finish all the hair, don't let any of it dry, but really spread that uh, ethematic blue and contrast medium out across the model. Make sure it goes into kind of recesses of bits of hair. Obviously be careful when you come to parts you've finished. And the reason I'm doing the hair first is because this is kind of the darker of the bits that we're going to kind of finish off, like with the skin is going to be lighter. So if we get the hair done and we need to go in and repair any parts of the skin we can now some of the the models in this set they've got um kind of a purpley pink tinge to the hair you can do it exactly the same way as this just use magos purple instead of ethematic blue so 50 50 the contrast medium uh, magos purple and ethematic blue so get that done and then we'll come back and we'll uh, highlight it up next once that uh, ethematic blue is dry, you can use a little bit of white scar just to to highlight uh, highlight some of the strands of hair. And where you can, you can just try and try and use the shape again to just pull your brush along to get those nice crisp highlights on the on the leading edges. So it's a nice, effective way of getting a nice. Uh, 
nice easy uh, effect on the hair like I said for the ones that have got the pinkier hair you could do exactly the same thing with some uh, Migos purple contrast paint so just work the hair around highlight as much or as little as you want with the white scar and then we'll come back and uh, we'll mix that on the skin next just before we jump onto the skin just take some Macallion green contrast paint and use this to paint uh, over all those kind of bits that are kind of going to be gem like again if you're not sure which bits they are you can check the box art this Sakellian green does 90% of the work for you so just get those done and then we'll come back let that dry and we can pop a little bit of a highlight on them as well just to kind of give that glassy effect of a gem just what you need to do then is just take a little bit of that white scar and just pop some dots along some of the ridges and obviously in the middle of the gems and then as that dries it'll uh, it'll look really nice and it'll start to look quite nice and uh, and shiny We'll highlight the black next with some Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now, for the staff, that's a, a nice easy one. Just tip of your brush and you can kind of pull it down on both sides. And, and just for a bit of info, guys, I'm not going to show you how to paint the base in this video. Um, I've got another video, which you'll be able to see the link to up above. Now this is uh, shows you how I'm going to paint this space, shows you how I'll paint most of my bases, but I think it's easy to just pop in another video for you to have a watch afterwards, uh, rather than uh, worry about adding extra time onto this video. So I'm just going to highlight all the black with some Mechanicus Standard Grey, and we're just looking for some thin lines that'll help us... Uh, accentuate some of the, the sculpting details on the model so hopefully once that's done all the ethermatic uh, blue will have dried and then we can come back and we'll start and finish the skin we'll base the skin with some flayed one flesh so just take your time with this and work it over all the kind of bits that are still still white now if there's any uh, overspill from that ethermatic blue just quietly tidy it up and you may need to go back in and and add a second coat in there so just work around all the skin with this flayed one flesh and we'll come back and we'll get to work on giving it some life next once that uh, flayed one flesh is dry we're going to take some gullum and flesh and we're going to mix it 50-50 with contrast medium and we're going to paint this all over the flayed one flesh that we've just put down. Taking our time not to go over anything that we've already uh, finished. And you can see there that goes into the recesses really nicely. That will uh, give us a really nice effect on the skin. If you if you want it to be a little more red, if you want the skin to be a little more red, then you can add a, another uh, coat of Reichland Flesh Shade. I keep calling it Reichland Flesh Shade. It's Gullman Flesh. Uh, my bad. Thankfully, the graphics on the screen are better than my brain. Um, even though they came from my brain, at least uh, they tell you the right colour. So just work your way around, get the, the Gullman Flesh on. And then we'll come back and highlight it up next. You may want to, so for some under the armpit there, for example, you may want to put a little bit more. And as it dries, it'll it'll pull away nicely. Once that gullum and flesh is dry, we're going to highlight back up using flayed one flesh. So we're looking for all the kind of the sharp edges. Now, female features are a lot softer than than male features, so we're not looking for drastic lines of delineation uh, as we would with men now we'll do the makeup in a bit as well but just realized the wash makes this model look like she's lost a tooth uh, she hasn't lost a tooth or a tooth 
uh, depending on your pronunciation. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're just going to look for all the raised points. We're going to we're going to paint a lot of this flayed one flesh back in. We're we're going to leave the uh, Gulliman flesh in the recesses in the main, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at adding just a, a little bit of a brighter extreme highlight. Just want to take some pallid witch flesh just to really bring out things like the nose, the cheekbones. Because uh, like I said, we're going to pop some makeup in there, so we don't need to spend too much time working on those. And also just uh, to bring out some of the kind of more prominent parts of the of the anatomy and all the fingers as well just to brighten them out so it's optional you don't have to do this if you don't want to i just think it adds that kind of extra dimension to the model just on the knuckles there just helps that skin kind of pop a little bit so work your way around you do this you don't have to like i said and then we'll come back and uh, i think we're pretty much done so we need to focus on the eyes and the makeup next so the first thing we're going to do with the eyes, we're going to water down some of Bad and Black and paint this into the eye sockets. Just like that. Because we've watered it down, it'll be a little thinner. So you'll get some of the uh, some of the skin underneath showing through. And we also want to just paint in the eyebrows. Now they are sculpted on. So you can identify them, just move your brush along to paint them in. I'll just finish them off cam now. And once you've got that black where you're happy with it, and if you need to go back in with that flayed one flesh just to fix it up, you can. I'm just going to take that ethematic blue mix that I thinned with contrast paint and just paint it into the areas above the eye to get that blue eye makeup. Now you can see that it's very thin and it's going to need a little bit more so it might need two maybe two uh, three coats of it in there. Just wait for it to dry and then paint it in there but what you'll see is you'll get that you'll get that tint but you'll still be able to see the skin through it. Right so we're pretty much at the end obviously apart from the base we just need to paint the eyes now. So this is somewhere I really need to improve is, is showing you how to paint eyes on camera. So here goes. Now I'm using Pallid Witch Flesh. I've got a, a really good point on my brush. And essentially what I'm looking for is to draw a line inside that black eye makeup like that. I'm going to paint the teeth as well. Uh, and I'm going to do the other side off cam because I have to get into all sorts of angles. Uh, to try and do it without hitting the nose uh, but I'll do that we'll come back do the pupils and we're done and the pupil is simply a case of thinning down some black paint and aiming for the middle of the eye like that so there we are I'm going to paint the base on a different video. Like I said, the link will be at the end. It'll also be earlier on in the video. But we'll have a look around the turntable next. We are done. So there we have it. Morgwith is ready to lead her blade coven. Now, don't forget, you can paint the rest of the models in the set exactly the same. I left the mistakes in there so that you can see that, yes, I make mistakes too. And that nothing uh, is permanent. You can go in, you can correct anything. I'm relatively happy with how she's turned out. I do need to practice a little bit more on some of these elements, as you can see. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. I really appreciate all your feedback. If you want to support the channel, don't forget you can using the links in the description. You can join my Patreon for exclusive access to me, behind the scenes looks and exclusive tutorials. You can also use the links to get up to 20% off Goblin Gaming. And there's also links there to some of my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.